Discover the true extent of China's military capabilities and strength in this in-depth look at their armed forces. From cutting-edge technology to vast manpower, uncover the secrets behind China's military might. Watch now to learn about the real military power of China. China Collision Fire By 2027, China aims to have fully modernized its armed forces across all branches and services. Many fear that this same year could also mark the beginning of the invasion of Taiwan, an event that some experts believe could trigger World War III. With an impressive defense budget of $236 billion in 2024, China is seriously preparing to assert its military influence globally, and especially in the Indo-Pacific region. In this video, we will break down just how powerful China's military really is under Xi Jinping and its position on the global stage. Is China as strong as they say? Well, you're about to find out, and the truth might leave you utterly astonished. The People's Republic of China, with one of the largest and most powerful armed forces in the world, competes in military capability with giants like the United States and Russia. This military expansion has been a cause of concern for smaller countries in the Indo-Pacific region, such as the Philippines and Taiwan, which view every Chinese military action as a potential threat to regional stability. The rapid rise of the Chinese military is especially notable, from simple peasant militias to a formidable force. The transformation of the Chinese forces began in earnest after the civil war that ended in December 1949 with the victory of the Communist Party. Barely six months later, China became involved in the Korean War in the 1950s, supporting North Korea against the South and its Western allies, including the United States. Despite heavy Chinese losses, this conflict was crucial for China's tactical learning and strengthened its relationship with the Soviet Union, which became a key ally in China's military modernization at that time. With Soviet support, China received vital military technology and training, including the provision of equipment such as rifles, tanks, and aircraft. This period also marked the beginning of deep military reforms following the Soviet model, encompassing everything from centralized command to the development of more advanced military and technological strategies. Additionally, the start of a nuclear program in the mid-1950s was a decisive step for China, as possessing nuclear weapons not only expanded its military capability but also elevated its deterrence power against Western powers, positioning the country as a rising superpower. China's military transformation took a significant turn in the late 1960s when the relationship with the Soviet Union soured. This estrangement was driven by Moscow's fear that China could compromise its national security. Despite the reduction in collaboration, which limited China's access to advanced technologies like fighters, bombers, missiles, and tanks, the reverse engineering process had already been completed, and Chinese engineers had gathered enough information to develop their own prototypes. Some were copied, and others were stolen. In the 1980s, China's military doctrine underwent another radical change. Abandoning guerrilla tactics, China adopted a more traditional and formidable approach to conventional warfare. With massive investments in mechanizing its infantry, it incorporated main battle tanks and armored vehicles, transforming its armed forces into an army capable of directly facing Western powers. A distinctive aspect of the People's Liberation Army PLA, of China that sets it apart from other global armed forces is its explicit loyalty and obedience to the Chinese Communist Party beyond the state itself. This alignment is not a hidden aspect, in fact, it is a proudly proclaimed and documented principle. Official texts of the Chinese military emphasize that the purpose of the PLA is to provide strategic support to consolidate the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party and the socialist system. Another interesting difference of the Asian Titan lies precisely in the name it gave its armed forces, People's Liberation Army. Unlike most countries, where the term, army, exclusively refers to land forces, in China this term encompasses all military branches and services. The People's Liberation Army is structured into four main services and four complementary branches that cover all aspects of the country's security. People's Liberation Army Ground Force. Established in 1927, it constitutes the central axis of China's defense and has historically been the pillar of its sovereignty. This branch is organized into 12 brigades, which are divided into six combined brigades and six support brigades, encompassing a wide range of military capabilities. It houses most of the artillery, tanks, and mechanized infantry. 
The ground force has approximately 975,000 soldiers. Among its arsenal are 4,000 tanks, including advanced models like the Type 99A, Type 98, and the latest Type 99A. Additionally, it possesses around 4,000 artillery pieces and 7,700 modern armored vehicles, including the Type 04 and Type 08 models. Chinese Air Force Its two main missions are interception and the defense of Chinese skies, but these basic objectives have evolved. Today, it is a hybrid institution that must carry out defensive and offensive operations both inside and outside of China, including potential actions against Taiwan. This air force is the third largest in the world, excluding the air components of land and naval forces. It has a fleet of approximately 2,566 aircraft, according to data provided by the Chinese government. This figure includes a mix of both modern and older planes, with models ranging from the advanced Chengdu J-20, whose technology the Chinese allegedly acquired by stealing documents of the American F-22 Raptor, to the Chengdu J-10, the Shenyang J-11, licensed versions of the Russian Su-27, the Harbin Z-19 attack and reconnaissance helicopters, and the Xi'an H-6 strategic bombers. As for personnel, the Chinese Air Force has 395,000 troops, though only a few of these are pilots. The others perform tasks related to the maintenance and support of the aircraft. Navy of the People's Liberation Army of China. Representing one of the most strategic, important, and well-funded fronts of the country, the Chinese Navy is organized into five sub-branches. The Surface Force, Submarine Force, Coastal Defense, Naval Aviation, and Marines. The Chinese Navy operates through three major fleets located in the Southern, Eastern, and Northern commands, but predominantly, the naval arsenal is concentrated in the surface fleet. Among its assets are two aircraft carriers in operation and a third under construction, seven cruisers, 42 destroyers, 41 frigates, 11 amphibious assault ships, 109 landing units. Additionally, China possesses a considerable number of missile and patrol boats, crucial for operations such as a hypothetical invasion of Taiwan. Submarine Branch China has 59 submarines, including 12 nuclear-powered ones. Of these, six are of the modern and powerful Type 093 class, notable for their length of 110 meters, beam of 11 meters, and ability to reach speeds of up to 30 knots submerged. These Shang-class submarines are equipped with torpedoes and cruise missiles, making them a formidable tool in the Chinese naval arsenal. Naval Force China boasts the most numerous naval force on the planet. While American ships tend to be larger and carry more armament and technology, China has a strategic distribution of land-based anti-ship missiles. The entire coastline of the country is a vast line of archers waiting for the signal to fire and annihilate any invading force that approaches its waters. Third Maritime Force One of the Chinese government's secrets is the existence of a branch known as the Third Maritime Force, operating as the pirate mercenary complement to the Chinese Navy and Coast Guard. This unofficial group, composed of private fishing vessels, has been involved in numerous incidents in the Pacific and South China Sea in recent years. It is estimated that around 300 to 350 boats are strategically dispersed throughout these waters. Although the Chinese government does not formally recognize this branch, they operate as part of a tactic that involves using covert military operations behind the facade of private companies. These boats, while not equipped for the direct destruction of others, can obstruct maritime traffic, harass Filipino fishermen, pollute strategic ports, and conduct covert surveillance with radars and other devices. It is also suspected that they could harbor equipment such as drones, naval mines, or anti-ship missiles ready to be deployed in support of Chinese naval operations if necessary, functioning as high seas mercenaries in service of Xi Jinping's maritime strategies. Missile Force According to Western analysts, this crucial branch has six main bases strategically distributed according to the country's defense priorities. Three bases form an offensive arc in southern China to counter any threat from Taiwan, one in the northeast focused on the Korean Peninsula and Japan, another in the northwest monitoring potential conflicts with India, and a final base located in central China. In addition to these main facilities, there are multiple smaller support bases essential for the transport and secret handling of projectiles to the silos. 
The missile forces, which include about 120,000 personnel, are responsible for the development and maintenance of ballistic and cruise missiles, including those with nuclear capabilities. The Chinese Communist Party's policy regarding its nuclear arsenal is clear, adhering to the doctrine of no first use of nuclear weapons. These armaments are intended exclusively for defense. Although China does not publicly disclose the exact number of its nuclear warheads, Estimates like those from the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists in their 2024 nuclear notebook suggest that China possesses around 500 nuclear warheads with plans for future expansion. Strategic Forces Until April 2024, China maintained a branch dedicated exclusively to strategic forces, focused on surveillance and intelligence tasks. However, in early 2024, specifically in April, Xi Jinping decided to reorganize this sector, dividing it into four more specialized branches to improve efficiency and focus. These new branches are Aerospace Force Dedicated to operations and surveillance in space Cybersecurity Force Focused on protecting the country's digital infrastructure Information Support Force Manages data collection and analysis Joint Logistics Support Force Responsible for optimizing logistical support across all Chinese military branches in recent years, Xi Jinping has pushed a series of laws promoting what he calls the Chinese dream, with the goal of positioning China as the world's leading military and economic power. Although the People's Liberation Army has made considerable advances by incorporating cutting-edge weaponry and technology, it still faces a significant challenge, the lack of recent combat experience. The last time China directly participated in a war was in 1979, in the Sino-Vietnamese War. Therefore, it lacks updated knowledge on how its military forces operate in modern combat or how its innovations will perform in a real-world context. However, this situation also presents advantages, as it allows China to observe and learn from current global conflicts to determine where to strategically invest its resources and how to prepare its military forces for future challenges. China is one of the few countries heavily investing in the use of drones, especially FPV drones seeing them as a cheap way to inflict numerous casualties on enemy infantry and mechanized forces, as demonstrated in the Ukraine war. China has the largest commercial drone industry on the planet, so investing in this field is logical and strategic. It is common to see Chinese military and police units performing impressive demonstrations with FPV and other types of drones, highlighting their growing incorporation into combat and surveillance tactics. Despite this, combat experience is invaluable. It is like a boxing match, both boxers may claim they will knock out the other before the fight, but it is only at the end of the match that you see who was serious and who was just talking. The demonstrations of weaponry, parades, and tests conducted by China are more of a spectacle designed to intimidate potential adversaries rather than a display of real capability. Don't get me wrong, military drills and parades have their importance, but they do not faithfully reflect the complexities and difficulties of a real armed conflict. Therefore, while China has made significant advances in its military power, the true test of its capability will be its performance in a real conflict. Although China's military might may appear impressive and numerous visually, these events do not provide an accurate measure of its true military capability in combat situations. In the White Paper, a series of documents outlining China's future policies, it is stated that the priorities of the People's Liberation Army include protecting national sovereignty and fighting insurgent movements that challenge the political hegemony of the Communist Party. Additionally, they highlight the importance of cybersecurity and the commissioning of satellites. One of the main focuses is to ensure control over the South China Sea, a region central to Chinese foreign policy due to its strategic and economic implications. This goal is closely linked to the issue of Taiwan, a highly controversial topic in global geopolitics, where China maintains its claim over the island, considering it an inalienable part of Chinese territory, despite over 70 years of de facto independent administration by Taiwan. If China aspires to reaffirm its sovereignty over a region the United States has pledged to defend, it is crucial that it can project its power immediately and sustainably. The Chinese government is aware that to counteract U.S. influence in southern waters, it must not only increase its naval presence but also significantly improve the effectiveness of its amphibious forces. Today, it is no longer an exaggeration to state that China possesses one of the most powerful and advanced naval fleets in history. 
For this reason, in recent years, a large part of the country's military investment has been directed at strengthening these areas, preparing for a possible confrontation over Taiwan that could have very serious consequences, such as a third world war. The year 2027 marks the date for an ambitious project that could redefine the global military structure. Many experts believe that this is the year China will invade Taiwan. The recently appointed U.S. Indo-Pacific Command Commander, four-star Admiral Samuel Paparo, expressed his concern in June 2024 as follows. The Chinese want to present the world with a short and sharp war so that it becomes a fait accompli before the world can act together. My job is to ensure that from now until 2027 and beyond, the U.S. armed forces and their allies are able to prevail. If you want to support the channel, consider acquiring a membership. You can see the available options by clicking on the Join button, which is located just below this video. Your support is completely optional, but I appreciate it. Thank you for your attention.